Yeah. So like I, I, I mentioned before, um, I did lose my dad in April of, of last year. And um, it was definitely, it was sudden, you know, I, I'm, I was 23 at the time and he was 55. So I had no, I was actually in Hawaii um, visiting my stepdad. So this is kind of a depressing loss story, but it gets more depressing. Um, but anyway, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It does. It really doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. It, it, you know, it's, it's about having a story, telling a story that, that, that resonates and has, that means something to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I was, um, so my mom's second marriage, she's, um, divorced him and was, she's on her third marriage. Stepdad's great. But my second stepdad, uh, or, you know, first stepdad technically, he was just uh, still, even after they divorced, still was just like a, a father figure to me. And he would fly me out to Hawaii once a year because that's where he lived. That's where they met. Um, and so I was I was in Hawaii for a month um, back in May, April. And it was just like a week went by where my dad just wasn't texting me back. You know, I was asking questions about like school and like things like this. And like, um, just, you know, just got that gut feeling where I was like, there's something wrong. Um, I... Luckily, I, I know one of his really close friends that lives right up the street from him. So I called him and I was like, Can you just go check on my dad. You know, it's been like a week since um, he hasn't picked up. And he's actually the one that like walked in and, and found him. And like I said, it was like he died from a heart attack. So it was just it was sudden. We had no idea of any like precursors, which I think is, is you know, better. Like, I you know, I didn't watch him suffer from cancer or anything for years, you know, so kind of that like fast, you know, release was, I think made me deal with it a little better. And what also made me deal with it a lot better was especially like the six months before he passed, we would just became really close. Uh, I lived with him for a few months and, you know, we'd go out to the bar. I was like his wingman. He was literally like one of my best friends. We would go to festivals and concerts together and like party together. And like, uh, he was definitely not a normal dad, you know? Um, so that was, uh, yeah. And then, to get more depressing a month later, or like a month later, um, we had his virtual memorial cause it was in the pandemic. We couldn't actually have a memorial and literally like in the middle of m- the memorial, my stepsister in Hawaii calls me and I was like, can I call you back? Like I'm in the middle of this memorial. She's like, no, it's important. Um, and then to find out my stepdad in Hawaii died during my dad's memorial. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, oh. okay, come on universe. Like, what are you doing to me? Um, so, you know, I kind of, I grew up in like, you know, all my friends had these like family issues and like, you know, abuse and all this stuff. And I grew up like, you know, pretty like all happy. I was like, you know, when something bad going to happen to me? And then it was like all at once, just kind of, wow, kind of like compiled. Uh, so let's back up for a sec. Okay. So how old were you when your mom and dad divorced? I was like five or six. So they so divorced young. Yeah, I was young, but I was really lucky. Um, they, you know, I would, wouldn't say they stayed like best friends, but they stayed like really cordial with each other. Like we spent all Christmases and Easter's. So growing up, like the divorce didn't really affect me super negatively. Uh, my dad had to stay in Northern California and my mom and I moved first to San Diego and then to Hawaii. And so I kind of saw him less and less um, throughout high school. Um, but luckily was able to like rekindle that. Um, after and are I, you an I only child? Back. Any siblings? I, um, yeah, only child. Only child. Um, yeah. 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 So would you say, so, so you're, you're five or six when they divorce and then your dad stays in Northern California and you're in Southern California, then Hawaii. Um, mm-hmm. and so, so like you said, you didn't get to see him as much. So yeah. then these six months, these six months before he died, when you guys got close, how, talk to me about how that happened. Like, was that something conscious that happened on your part or on his part? What was that? Since I, even after, so my mom and I moved to San Diego and then Hawaii, and then I moved a lot after that. I went to Colorado for, for college. Um, I lived back in San Diego for a little bit. I moved down to Mexico for almost a year, uh, moved to Arizona after that. And then after I was dating this guy when I was living in Arizona and it was just, it was this really like stressful relationship where like I was, I was 20, 21 and he was 28 and had like no job or car or anything. So it was really stressful. And finally, my dad kind of like put the foot down because I asked my dad for like help with rent one more time. And he's like, what is what is John doing with his life? Anyway, my dad flew out to Arizona with me and we like packed up all my stuff. And then I lived in L.A. with my dad uh, after that. Uh, until so wait a minute. I, yeah. So let's slow down because this is a good part. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to. Let's not rush. Let's, let's <laughs> my story not rush. is uh, long and crazy. <laughs> oh, honey. 
<laughs> Listen to the episode that comes out this Monday on losing it. You'll you'll get a little taste of my story. But and you know, of course, my story's longer because I'm older. But um, let's slow down. So yeah. <laughs> living in Arizona, and I threw a lot at you, John. With yes. John. No, no, with, I'm enjoying every John. second of it. And <laughs> yeah, say, we actually lived uh, in Mexico together, um, and then moved to Arizona. And like I said, he like had no job. He was like an ex. He played on the minor league baseball. And he spent, he like blew all his money. So, and he wasn't like, didn't want to get a job. Cause I just started doing comic cons at the time. So like I was getting enough money to like survive. Like if it was just me surviving, it would have been great. But then, you know, I had to, I was the only, I was the sole provider in the family for, at age 21, you know? So right. uh, with a 28 year old guy, yeah. who's not, not pulling his weight at all. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He must've been really cute. Was he really uh, cute? He was, he was cute, you know, but now looking back, definitely not, not cute, cute enough. enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Not cute enough, not nice enough. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. all right. So, so you call, uh, so you call up dad and you're like, dad, can you help me with the rent? Yeah, he's like, I'm like, he's like, uh, no. what is, yeah. He's like, no, not again. What is John doing? You know, he kind of like finally put his foot down and that was like, I was getting over the relationship. We dated for two years and like the last year I was just really like, okay, this isn't good. So having my dad kind of put his foot down, helped me like was the linchpin to help me get so, out of it. So, but dad gets on a plane and comes to Arizona. Uh, yeah, yeah. He actually drives. I think we drive or maybe we flew together, but either way. Yeah. He comes but, to Arizona. But he comes to Arizona and, and, and does he say, John, uh, <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah, yeah, please so how did that happen? So I'm trying to think of all the, like the, I think I actually, so I was in Arizona. This is how it happened. Uh, I was in Arizona. Dad says no. Like, I, like my dad, he's like, very sweet, very nice. And then if, but when he's mad, like he gets mad. So like, that's when, you know, like there's really something wrong. Um, so I actually ended up, my mom lived in San Diego. I flew to San Diego, pretty much told John, didn't tell John that we were like breaking up or anything right then. But I was like, kind of was like, I just need to see my mom. And it was like, then that we kind of devised like, okay, you know, how to, how to get away. Uh, <laughs> you, and devised, I have, you devised a yeah, plan. <laughs> devised a plan. And essentially, but I remember, I, th I think I, I stayed in Arizona or San Diego at the time, but either way, John ended up finding out that we were breaking up, you know, all this was happening. And John actually, my car was in Arizona and he ended up packing up all my stuff for me, probably in a fit of rage or whatever, just like put all my stuff in the car. And so when then my dad, I think he, my dad then drove to San Diego when we flew to Arizona together. And so by the time we actually got to the house, um, everything was packed up. I just had to go inside and like say bye, one last goodbye and get my dog. And, you know, my dad, uh, uh, gotta yeah. Gotta get the dog. You <laughs> yeah, gotta, gotta get, get the, the dog. dog. And then me and my dad, we road tripped back to, to LA together. So yeah, it was, it was dad, dad to the rescue. <laughs> exactly. I hope he sees it. Oh, that's uh, great. <laughs> I'm glad dad came to the yeah, rescue. And like, you know, even though, like I said, we were spent less time in, in, um, you know, in high school, like he was still he was still such a great dad. Like it wasn't like, you know, he was this absent father in my life. Like we, he was still like, I knew like no matter what he'd be there for me. So that was a good, uh, he had your back. He had your back when he was in that moment, he was there for you in the best way because he said no, yeah, he said exactly. no when he needed to say no. And that forced you to go to go. What the heck is going yeah, on here? Exactly. Right? I'm like, okay, if dad's mad, then I, I really need to change something. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. So talk to me a little bit about these, the, the, how you guys ended up like having these four months together. Do, do you feel like you sort of got to know each other again during that time or, or got to know him in a different way because now you were an adult. I mean, you were his wingman. Yeah. I mean, that's a yeah, whole yeah. other. It, it was definitely now it felt more like we were friends, you know, definitely um, getting to know each other a different way. And like, you know, he would tell me about all these like, you know, party stories he had growing up. And like, we just got to know each other again, just as friends and not like, you know, he was still like looking out for me and like being a, a good dad, you know, it wasn't like everything was like to the wind, but yeah, I just got to know him in a, in a right, different way. You guys way. weren't like taking Molly together. No, or, no, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we did take shrooms together once, but you know, that's a different story. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so he was he was a cool dad. We would go to uh cool with a capital C. Yeah, cool exactly. with a capital C. We would go to like we went to a couple um we went to this music festival um in San Diego together and then one of the ones that we went to before he passed, um, it was actually my uncle bought tickets for me and my cousin to originally go to this reggae festival and it was um right in Long Beach, I believe, and um the Queen Mary is this beautiful ship that got converted into a hotel. 
I know that I'm, I grew up yeah. in Southern California. Oh, perfect. So, yeah, so you know. I, the Queen, the Queen Mary was in Los Angeles, La- sorry, Long Beach while I was, while I still lived in California. So yes, oh, okay. the Queen yeah. Mary got converted. Yes. Sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. So we had plans to stay, stay there. And, but last minute, my cousin was like, I don't like reggae. I don't want to like, I don't want to go to this, which is, it was really weird. It was like her dad's Christmas present to her, but well, no, whatever it worked. It all worked out. Um, and she was like, hey, you can just like take the ticket and like bring a friend. And honestly, like, because my dad and I were just like, such good friends. The first person I thought of, I was like, well, I don't want to go with anyone, but my dad. Um, and so that was really a few months before he passed. Um, we ended up going to that concert together, um, three days staying on the Queen Mary, just like, just having a ball. It was that, great. That is like, seems so incongruous. Yes. The reggae concert on the Queen Mary. I did not see that coming. Right? Yeah, no, it, was, it was great. And then after that in, um, October, is that when you did the shrooms? Is that when you did the shrooms on the Queen Mary? No, we might we might have done shrooms then, yeah. But <laughs> uh, small about, you know, but it just uh, just enough, you know. He was responsible. Uh but uh and then in um October we actually um with one of his his good friends, Chris, who was the one that, you know, ended up finding him in the long run. Um, we all went to New Orleans for Halloween together. Um and yeah, so we just had a, a few like really good trips. Um, you know, it wasn't all like partying, party, 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 but you know, that definitely brought us closer to it again, just more like hanging out as friends. And, um, I ended up after a few months of living with him, I found my, um, actually rented a studio beneath my uncle's house. And so I moved down to Southern California before he passed. Um, but just being able to live with him. And like, even when I lived in San Diego, I would drive up to LA, <clears throat> like, you know, every, every few weeks just to hang out with him and Chris and, yeah. So we just like, yeah, definitely got to know him in a different way, which was really nice. You don't, you didn't know it at the time. You didn't know you had this limited amount of time with him, obviously, yeah. but looking back, it you must've felt like a, a certain amount of, you know, joy that you had all that time, you know, that you had this sort of concentrated time where you got to know him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think like, you know, I think grief is harder to deal with when you have a lot of regret, you know, and like, you know, of course there's regret. Like, I wish I spent more time with him, like even in high school or whatever it is. But, but just knowing that we had like all that concentrated time together, uh, definitely made grieving and the whole like grieving process a lot smoother. Yeah. 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 And what was the thing about him that you liked the most? Definitely. Um, so he grew up in a really Christian, like hardcore church of Christ, like cult version of Christianity, almost, um, household. And he was one of, he was the youngest of six siblings. Um, but since he was little, like two years old, essentially he's been, he was drawing and making stories. So he always knew that art was his passion. And of course, like telling that to his dad, um, he wasn't, you know, it didn't, that didn't go over very smoothly, but he just, he followed his passions and he was like, I don't care. I'm going to go to art school and I'm going to, you know, put my portfolio on the desk of a Disney executive and get a job. And, you know, he went on to Pixar and, you know, um, ended up directing like Cars Tunes, Mater's Tall Tales. He directed Cars 3 for the first few years. And like, he just, uh, being able to see him turn his passion into, into, you into know. an amazing career. Like amazing. Yeah. That's definitely one of the reasons that, you know, that's definitely the thing I love most about him. And the one thing that like, you know, has helped me be who I am. You know, I see, see something and I'm like, no, I'm, no, I can do it, you know, with, uh, knowing, knowing that. So. Yeah, I was going to ask you what do you would think's the most important thing you learned from him, but I feel like you already told me that. Yeah, that is kind of all all in one, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because I everything that you're doing to me is sounds like it's passion driven, you know, and you know, fired. I was gonna say fire twirling, but it's yeah. not it's fire yeah, spinning, yeah. right? I, t- I don't know. Twirling, twirling sounds a little lame. <laughs> yeah. Spinning has some exactly. huevos. So <laughs> fire spinning and um doing the VJing and the videography and it's, you know, it sounds like you follow your passion and you've lived in all these interesting places and you're 24, my Lord. Yeah. I definitely uh, try to you know, take life by the, the horns or whatever that saying yeah, is. So. My, bro- my brother used to say, grab the bull by the balls and yeah. run with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I mean, it's, it's really just been a little over a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, April, April of last year. So yeah, just a little over a year. Where are you in the grieving process? Like how, I mean, I guess that's kind of a silly question because I mean, my mom died in 1997 and she was 81. No, no, sorry. In 2006. And I still, 
I still every once in a while just miss her so much. So yeah, I definitely like, I think like, you know, the past year I was, I was doing really good. I like felt, no, of course I felt sad about it, but you know, maybe it was just like oppressing it a little bit. And then recently there's been more moments where it's like more sad moments where I'll, I'll miss him more. Um, but it is, you know, it's, 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 it's on and off, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. It comes in waves. Yeah. Like sometimes exactly. you're like, I mean, I remember when my mom died, I was like sobbed, sobbed, a lot of sobbing. And then I would be, Oh, I guess I'm over it. And then I'd be driving the car and I'd start to sob and I'd have to pull over to the side of the yeah. road. And, yeah, exactly. It does come in waves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it absolutely does. Wow. I'm so sorry for your loss, yeah, but I'm okay. so happy that you had that time with him and that you had, like you said, no, no, yes, you, 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 maybe you regret that you'd spent more time with him in high school, but that's the kind of thing when you're a kid, you can't think about, you know, you're just doing your life, you know, and especially when you have divorced parents, you are just doing your life. Um, I'm just so glad that you guys, uh, I'm, you know, you had a cool dad, but a dad that wasn't that, a, but a dad who had your back and came to Arizona and said, uh, John, yeah, you're she's coming here. with me. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Definitely lucky. Oh my goodness. So do you have any, uh, advice or suggestions for somebody who might have, uh, recently lost a parent? Um, or yeah, I, I guess that would be a question, um, in terms of like, what, just what helped you deal with it? Yeah. I think like one of the biggest things, uh, you know, wherever, you know, wherever people are spiritually or whatever it is, I think like, I think that people who pass, you know, that's my belief is that they're, they're still, they're still with us. You know, sometimes I like kind of like feel his presence, you know, like, um, nothing like crazy paranormal or anything, but you know, just, you know, just knowing that they are with you, you know, that's kind of like people say that all the time and like people like kind of brush it off. But I, I really think that's true. And like, you know, just, uh, just knowing that, you know, you can keep them alive, like keep, keep talking about them and keep like, you know, bringing up their memories, you know, uh, as more time goes by, you're kind of like, oh, like, a, you know, are people going to forget about him or am I going to forget about him? But I think like the biggest thing is to just like keep reliving those like happy memories and and just focus on the good. Because like I said, like, you know, uh, grieving definitely takes it's a lot harder when we have a lot of regret. So just trying to, you know, not think about, you know, what you what you could have done and just really focusing on like all the all the good times that all the good, had. yeah. Yeah. Cause what have, could have, should have, doesn't get you anywhere. Doesn't yeah, get you anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. So it's easier Fantastic. said than done, but it's a yeah. Yeah. Good thing to exactly. practice. <laughs> losing it, 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 losing it. If 